Welcome and well met. I am the Quonset Manager, and this is the next installment in the Great Bear Island Tourist Information Kiosk video series. Today we investigate a lead in our search for the elusive Trombley, for we have seen a curious object in the distance through this narrow pass. Now at first glance it appears to be a train wreck, with two derailed boxcars upon it. But looks can be deceiving. From this angle, we can tell it is actually a road. A road beyond the collapsed tunnel where one might find an abandoned correctional facility transport vehicle. However, as we get closer, more is revealed. What is this? Why, it is a purple day cap that was not visible until we got close enough. Warily approaching, we look for signs of life and find none. We find no corpses, no loose items. We do not even find identifying marks upon the truck itself. Just a red stripe across the door. Upon closer inspection, we discover this day cab is hauling double trailers. That could be a clue as to its purpose. Originally, I thought it might be a shipment of Stacy's grape soda, a most sinister beverage if there ever was one. I will elaborate upon that at another date. But no, soda companies would not haul soda in double trailers. Moving on, we ask, what did it smash into? The second trailer is broken in the middle. It would have taken a great deal of force to do that. Perhaps someone bouncing from side to side as they cross this bridge, slamming into various support beams, might cause the damage that we see. Is that what happened? The fact that it is a double trailer with a day cab is the most important clue here. Few companies have authorization to do transport using doubles due to the unsafe nature of such an operation. One such organization is the Canadian Postal Service. With that being our only lead, let us see if we can find any clues at the Milton Post Office. Here we find the Post Office. Moving around behind the counter, we find a curious thing. There is a note here. Let us read it. Margaret, we have to stop accepting mail at Milton. We have no way of getting it back to the mainland. But we can't tell people that, or they'll know we've been holding on to it all this time. Find some excuse. Whenever you can, encourage people to use email or drones if they can afford it. I'll keep my eyes open for the mail van but I don't hold out high hopes. I imagine Jack probably drove it into a tree again, somewhere away in the back 40. We're likely to never find it again. Damn, I should have stopped him from taking the truck while he was on the drink. We'll see what I can do to fix the situation. Hold tight. It sounds like a van crashed, but most people aren't aware that you need at least a Class B license to drive a postal carrier delivery vehicle. That means that the person writing this note knows the lingo of being a truck driver. Truck drivers call the type of vehicle that we found crashed a van. What normal drivers think of as a van, truck drivers refer to as four-wheelers. Considering how this van appears to have been totaled, it appears the only thing it could have hit was the bridge, and yet it is such a long distance from said bridge. We must assume the driver was going rather fast when the accident happened, and that he made no real attempt to slow down. The obvious answer thus is, the driver was drunk, and possibly fell asleep behind the wheel. Another clue is the lack of a body. Perhaps the driver walked away, but I suspect nobody could have walked away from this crash, even if they survived. If he was wounded, he was helped to somewhere for medical treatment. If he was dead, someone seems to have recovered the body. I can only assume that this happened prior to the first flare, but not by much. I suspect, given the note, the accident, and all other indicators, it was a full day, perhaps two, before the world came to an end. Long enough for the letters Arthur to go look for Jack. Long enough for him to find Jack, and long enough to help the driver get medical attention. But why is the truck still here? Why didn't the letter's author call for a tow? Well, I suspect he did. Quonset Garage would be the only place on the island with a big enough bay to repair a truck like this. One thing that has always puzzled me about Quonset Garage was the lack of a wrecker. Wouldn't there be one somewhere near the garage? I suspect that the letter's author took Jack to the hospital, or some sort of medical treatment facility, and then called Quonset Garage, 
begging for them to tow the vehicle as discreetly as possible. The letter's author was obviously mortified at this getting out to the general public, so he would not only request it was done quietly, but that the wrecker approached the long way around to make sure as few people would know about the accident. I suspect that the wrecker was heading along various back roads to reach this scene just before the first flare hit. This explains why the truck is abandoned, why the important items on the truck were already removed, and also why there is no wrecker at the Quonset garage. Of course, to confirm my theory, we'd need to find a wrecker somewhere else on the island, but that's an investigation for another day. Which brings us back to my original purpose, to locate the infamous Trombley. There's no sign of him at this accident, but was it indeed an accident? Trombley is a monster from out of nightmare. He haunts my dreams with his misshapen form hidden behind his plague mask. Perhaps Jack was drunk, and this was indeed a result of drunk driving. Or perhaps the nefarious Trombley has successfully committed another atrocity. Perhaps this is evidence that he has been operating on this island long before the first flare, and we are all caught up in his web of deception and pain. Or perhaps some of the painkillers I took earlier went bad, and I'm having a really bad reaction. I am hallucinating movement out of the corner of my eyes, and the sound of a ringing phone echoes in the distance. It's probably nothing, but just to be safe, I'm going to go check the perimeter. Thank you for stopping by the Bear Island Tourist Kiosk. Be sure to stop by the Quonset Garage if you find yourself needing any supplies. Just remember our motto, Quonset Garage, where the water is always free.